Hi, I'm uh, Matthew King, and uh, this is the first time that I've ever done a poetry reading on recorded video, and it turns out that no matter how many takes I do of it, it's still going to feel really weird, um, and probably be full of hesitations, and I don't know what. Um, so I apologize for uh, any and all of that in advance. Um, uh, I'm here in uh, the country north of Belleville, uh, outside of... Uh, Marmara, Ontario. Um, I guess, uh, first of all, I want to thank Freefall Magazine uh, for putting on the contest, um, and especially uh, this year's judge, uh, Natalie Meisner, uh, for selecting my poem, uh, which still seems really unreal. Um, so thank you very much uh, for that. Um, I also want to give a shout out to um, the gang from the First Tuesday Muse uh, a series of poetry readings in uh, Tweed, Ontario, uh, which uh, happened at the now late lamented uh, Tweed's Mirror Hotel, which uh, burned down uh, a while ago. Um, so I would uh, definitely not be sitting here doing this now uh, if not for those uh, poetry reading nights, which uh, got me back into writing poetry regularly after a series of um, long hiatuses. So uh, thanks to all of you from uh, the first Tuesday Muse. Um, I also want to say uh, before I read my poem, uh, before I did this I was looking at a video of last year's um, launch um, and uh, I was um, blown away by the last words that uh, were read um, by last year's poetry winner, Carol Harvey Stesky, um, uh, from a poem that was on the shortlist, not the winning poem, but uh, uh, the last words that she uh, read last year were, were these. Even our own body parts abandon ship on the regular. Even our own body parts abandon ship on the regular. Um, and I was blown away by that because uh, the poem I'm going to read now um, resonates so much with, uh, with those words. And uh, it reminds me of how at those first Tuesday Muse uh, poetry nights back in Tweed, um, all of us uh, would come with whatever we happened to have written uh, that month and somehow all of it would seem to speak to each other. You know, as if we'd all, as if we'd all written it with that in mind, which obviously we hadn't. Uh, but it's all one poem, right? Everything is all, all one poem. Strands of all one poem. Um, so without too much further ado, um, I'll read my poem, uh, uh, which is called "A Two-Faced Kitten and Other Freaks of Nature." doesn't have two heads, I told myself. Like that was what I had to understand. It's not two cats that have two brains, it's one that has two faces. A born metaphor, though not a literal Janus. All four eyes are forward facing, the same as ours, but set at different angles to diverge into a more expansive field of view. I wondered how it could work two faces, until I realized I took for granted my own two eyes. Multiplying outlooks, hands and feet I sometimes coordinate, never minding heart, lungs, genitals, guts, all seemingly going on without me. But no more automatic than the words I don't, I can't think to say to myself. How many voices do I hear at once? clamoring to speak for my only face. The loudest claiming sole possession says that no one else was ever here, and I might believe it, but a two-faced kitten, which never knew it had to pull itself together, reminds me how much it's like any of us other freaks of nature. That's it. Thanks very much.